What is up, folks? All right, so today I am going to be um, adding tests to this bookshelf application. So you can find the repo um, on GitHub. It is kenci.com slash bookshelf. And um, yeah, I used it for my build a React.js app workshop, which I did two days ago. And it went really super well. I'm really happy about it. If you want me to do this again, then you can fill out this for, uh, form <clears throat> and you'll get a special discount and other things if I decide to do it again, which I actually I think I probably will. It went really well. I'm really happy with this workshop. Um, and there's always uh, workshops scheduled. So feel free to, uh, to look at any of these, add yourself to the wait list. Um, or um, if there's one that's already scheduled, you can grab one of the remaining slots. So um yeah but uh, i built this and i didn't have time to add tests to it and um i'm remiss about that so i wanted to add some tests and so that's what we're gonna do here um in the workshop repo so um this is the way that the here i'll show you the app first just so you get an idea um so here we can register i'm going to register with kenzie dodds and abc123 we'll register that and boom here i am um, I refresh and we get, we're like, we stay logged in. We can go to the discover page and we can add a couple of these books to our reading list. And then we can go to our reading list and we see those listed there. And when we're finished, we can mark it as read and it disappears from the reading list and goes to our finished books. Uh, and we can also give it a rating and we can uh, even add some sweet notes. And those update as you type. Um, and then from here we can mark it as unread and so now it only shows the start date or mark it back as read and it shows the start and the end date. Um, and then we can also remove it from our reading list and that gets rid of um, that metadata information. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool stuff going on here. That's pretty much the whole app. Um, incidentally, it actually just lives in the browser. There's no back end here. Um, all of the stuff is getting saved to our local storage right here. Um, and so that's mostly because like this is a 100% just learning React thing. I don't want to talk about uh, backends or whatever. And so um, I, yeah, the way that I do this is we actually um, override window.fetch and we see that uh, you can up, um, like save things to local storage. So as far as the application is concerned, it actually feels very much like it's all 100% regular backend and stuff and there's like um, random wait times for every request and stuff but it actually is all um, being persisted just in local storage and yes I realize that we have um, index DB and honestly I don't know how that works I've got a Firebase local storage database right there I'll get rid of that uh, I've never used index DB uh, local storage was sufficient for what I needed so that's why I used it um, it's good to see people again it has been a while since I live streamed here on YouTube um, yeah, just been really, really busy doing stuff like this. But I wanted to add some tests to this thing. And so I thought, you know, uh, let's just do this as part of a, a live stream um, because it helps me stay focused. That's part of the reason why I, I do live streams is so I can stay focused. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, this is the repo. Everything lives in the source directory. Um, we've got our hacks directory that um, has our database related stuff. And um, this is where we hack fetch. It's kind of uh, interesting how that works. We just say window.fetch is equal to uh, this thing where we look for our fake responses and if it has a handler, uh, or we'll get the yeah handler for if any of the test, uh, test things pass. So here we've got, if it's API at uh, list items slash, and it's a put method, then that's, um, one of the things that we have a handler for and we're going to do this for that handler so that's kind of how it works um yeah so it would, uh okay anyway so that's how that works and then we have uh, because we're not actually making requests you don't get to see the network tab and so i've got um this console group stuff going on here so that you can at least get an idea of what's going on with these uh, requests and responses um because that is pretty darn useful. So yeah, that is what we're gonna do uh, is add some tests to this. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, let me explain a couple of other things about the app. So here's our index. We start out with this bootstrap. I strongly recommend that people do this in their apps. Let's have a bootstrap thing that imports CSS and, and does some other like global things like this hacks thing. Um, I open sourced this stop runaway React effects uh, recently, just like literally, um, I don't know, 12 hours ago, 18 hours ago. Um, and it um, basically it overrides um, React use effect and use layout effect to prevent it from running too many times um, because you forgot some dependencies or something like that. Um, so that's what that's all about. And yeah, and then it does the hack fetch thing. Um, and then the rest of our bootstrap just adds some um, literally bootstrap CSS, the reboot CSS file, which just kind of normalizes browsers and stuff. Uh, and then some um, global styles and whatnot. Um, and then the index pulls in React and our app and our app providers, and it renders the app inside of the app providers. And here, if we look at our context, our app providers are the auth provider and the user provider. Um, but we also have this list item context, which is being used in, let's see, it's our authenticated app. Uh, we use that here because all these routes need the list items. Um, yeah. Mm. Let's see, what else do we have here? I feel like there was something that I wanted to wanted to add here but that's yeah that's I guess that's pretty much oh yeah I guess the important thing here this one's this is pretty cool too uh, is the app.js file um, basically what we do here is we uh, because our whole app is um, wrapped around the user context we have this custom use user hook which will reach into context and if there is a user then we'll render the authenticated app. Otherwise, we'll render the unauthenticated app. So we don't have to worry about routing and redirecting and anything. We don't even render the stuff that um, unauthenticated users can't see, uh, which is pretty cool. And then our auth context actually, um, when it's initially mounted, it will first uh, render a full page spinner while it is um, making this request to get the app data. So it'll say, hey, if there's a user token in local storage, then let's go um, get the user's information. And until that is finished, um, we'll render the full page spinner. Or if that rejects, then we're like, oh, shoot, we're kind of in a problem. Probably what I should do here is actually redirect, or, or not redirect, but log them out and just show them the unauthenticated um, side. I should probably fix that and do that. Maybe we'll do that when we're doing this today. Um, because yeah, like what's the user gonna do? If they refresh this, it'll keep happening probably. Um, so yeah, we don't even render the app until we determine whether or not we have a user, which I think is, is pretty cool because the auth context is, is really actually the root. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of screens for the authenticated side and we've got some components um, that are like the reusable things um, that we use throughout the app. So um, we've already got our testing stuff set up and I, I can even run a test. We actually have a test in here in the test directory. And this is just the like, it works test that I have in here just to make sure that it'll actually render. So uh, let me get rid of that and start a new one. Here we go. Yeah, there we go, good. So if I run NPM T to get my tests up and going, Sweet, there we go. Now, um, this it works test, I'm actually just gonna leave it. I don't really care. It doesn't take very long to run. Um, so yeah, six milliseconds. That is worth um, worth it to me. Oh, actually, you know what? It's not rendering my app anyway, so it's kind of worthless actually. Pretty, pretty worthless. So let's see. Um, the biggest bang for your buck is um, to have a single test that does like the happy path of the actual app. And typically you're gonna do that with something like Cypress. So maybe I should write that um, with Cypress. Mm. But I don't wanna work with Cypress right now. Uh, for some reason I just, let's, let's get some just tests in here and then we can add Cypress later. Um, and so even with Cypress though, we can do some more integration uh, type tests and I can mock out window.fetch and all that stuff. Um, to make it more realistic. I don't actually have to mock out window fetch because uh, I could just import the hack fetch thing and, and all my tests would work. 
almost like their end-to-end -end tests. But I don't want to do that um, as much as that would make things really easy. I want to make this uh, repo more real-worldy. Um, and so, yeah. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and so our biggest bang for the buck will probably be like, let's render the whole app. Let's navigate to something. Um, but I think I'm going to do a like a smaller test first just to kind of ease us into things. Um, so we just got a question. Uh, do I normally build the component first and then create the unit test or do I follow TDD to create the component? Um, I'm pretty, I, I don't TDD a whole lot. Uh, if I TDD, it's because it's an actual unit. But if I'm building a UI, then I don't often TDD. Um, but it's totally possible. And if you want to learn how to do that, um, testingjavascript.com can teach you. You can go get um, a pro subscription and I teach you how to do that in test react components with Jess and react testing library TDD right there. Boom. We've got a bunch of lessons about that. Uh, test drive API call even uh, test drive uh, router redirect all that stuff. Pretty cool. So you can check that out if you want to learn how to do that. But I don't I don't do it a whole lot. I do it sometimes and it's really cool that we can do that with react testing library. Um, but yeah, like I said, I don't do it a whole lot. Okay, so because I want to start with something a little bit smaller, I'm going to look at my components because those are typically typically going to be a uh, fair amount uh, simpler than everything else. And I think the book row, I don't think it actually has a whole lot of um, um, logic in it. And it's actually using some of our other uh, things. In fact, you know what? The status buttons thing, I think it's only, oh, it's used in book as well. Okay. So it is being used in two places. Uh, you know what, let's, let's do the rating one. Rating one will be really interesting because um, the rating has an on mouse over <coughs> on each one of these buttons. So here, I'll show you what, what we're talking about. I'll add this to our list and we get the rating thing. And as you, aha, we tripped up the, uh, the use effect uh, runaway thing. See, this is why my uh, runaway use effect thing is not built into the framework because sometimes uh, it's fine to have your use effect run um, 60 times in a, a thousand milliseconds. So um, when do I make BDD tests? I don't really do BDD either. Um, yeah, I just, I test for confidence and I don't really care whether it's TDD or D BDD or unit or integration, I just, I look at the thing and I'm like, this is how this thing's supposed to be used. And I test to make sure that it can be used that way. And it, if it, yeah, if that test breaks, then I know it can't be used that way anymore. And then I broke something. Um, okay, so anyway, um, so as you hover over each one of these stars, the um, mouse over thing happens and it updates which one is highlighted. Then you can click on one and that will persist the highlight state. Um, and then it makes a request to update the list item, uh, put request that sends in a body of rating is three and the response list item, uh, the response just contains the whole updated list item, which is pretty cool. Um, yep. You said the runaway effects is configurable exactly for that reason. Yes, it is configurable. So maybe we could configure it really quick. Let's go here. We're going to import, instead of hijack, we'll import um, the hijack effects. And then we'll say if process env node env. Well, oh man, that drives me bonkers. Um, is not production. Actually, let's just do it for development. I don't want it for test uh, either. Um, so if it's development, then we'll hijack the effects. We'll say the um, count, let's see, what is it? Uh, the call count. Um, we'll have that be like 200 um, or I don't know, let's do uh, 100 and the time limit in, um, I don't know. So five, five or one every five milliseconds. That's probably good. Let's try that. I go here and I'm like, yeah, we're good. That's solid. I think that's a good change. So what's what's going on? What was going on before is uh, here. Let's do every 
2500 milliseconds that will trigger it probably yeah there we go what's going on is we have a use effect that is being used um, happening from use async they have a use effect that has no dependencies um, and this is all it does it checks a ref um, it checks if we have a watch function we don't have a watch function um, but if we did then it would uh, check the previous version with the new stuff and if those things change, then it'll call load again. Um, and so it's act it's not actually doing anything, but because the callback is getting called um, 100 times in 2,500 milliseconds, then that's, uh, yeah, then it's getting, it's triggering our, our little doodad here. Um, so yeah, and I think that's the reason why it can't really be built into the framework because sometimes it actually is what you want. Um, like, I don't know how you'd avoid this anyway. Those, yeah. I mean, like, maybe there's a way to implement this in CSS, I guess. I don't know. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and we'll add a test rating.js. And I'm going to import React from React. We'll import render and probably fire event from React testing library. And by the way, we have React Testing Library all set up right here and just DOM um, in our setup test file. So we're good with the cleanup. Uh, and then I'm going to import the rating component. That's a default export, I believe. Yep. From rating. And then we'll add our first test. Sweet. And then I'm going to uh, focus on rating because I only care about that one. OK, and I'm going to get rid of that. All right. so. When I'm testing something, I'm going to step back and be like, OK, what are the use cases that this thing needs to support? And often I'll like look at the thing. If it's a visual thing, I'll be like, OK, so there are here's one thing that I can do. As I mouse over the different stars, then the, um, the highlighted stars change. Uh, another thing that it does is when it renders in the first place, it's going to render what the list item rating or yeah, rating is. The list item is um, the data that um, that represents um, yeah, it, it stores the rating, the notes, and the start date and finish date, basically. Um, and then it has a book that's associated with it uh, and a user that's associated with it. Um, and so actually, we can take a look at that whole data structure right here in the response right there, the list item. Yeah, so it's got a, a book, a book ID, finish date, ID, notes, owner ID, rating, and start date. That's what it's got. So um, it initializes, it renders out what the rating is, um, it updates the um, highlighted stars, and then when a star is clicked on, then a get re or a put request is sent to this particular endpoint to um, to update that star count. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So there are like three things that are going on that we really care about uh, that we need to cover in this particular um, components test. So let's write those out. Um, updates, highlighted stars um, on mouse over. And this one, it um, um, uh, updates, uh, or let's see. Um, yeah, makes put call to update the list item on click. And Oh yeah, also maybe this would be contained in here, but um, restores uh, star or highlight, oops, highlighted stars on blur. So when we blur the, um, yeah, so we're like, we're here and then boom. Um, also like this works um, with the tab character as well so on blur or on mouse out. Um, so let's see. We probably want to do both um, on mouse over, but also on um, focus and um, and restores on blur. And then we'll and restore re restores on mouse out. OK, cool. Um, and then it makes a put call on click and that applies to both, whether it's the keyboard or the mouse, which is kind of nice. Um, and I think that uh, that was it, right? I'm trying to remember if there was anything else. I, th I think that was it. 
OK, so let's write our first one. Uh, updates highlighted stars on mouse over. So what I'm going to do here is I'll get debug from render, and we'll render the rating. And our first thing that's going to happen is we're going to get an error thrown. And that's going to be uh, that we're trying to destructure rating from undefined. We need to pass a list item. Um, do I always write my test this way? Not often. Sometimes I do that. Um, and I'm normally happier when I do write out my all my test cases first. Um, but yeah, I pretty much don't ever do it this way. I'm, I'm thinking about them this way, but I, I don't typically do it this way. What about focus on one and mouse over on another? Um, oh, that's, yeah. So if, if you have focus on one and then you mouse over on another, then the mouse over uh, will win. So it, it basically, um, here, so I'm, let's see, where's my focus? Yeah, my focus is right there, and then I mouse over on another. Um, and the, the focus doesn't like persist where the stars are going to be. It just updates where the star should be at the time, um, if that makes any sense. So I, and I'm not too concerned about writing a test for that particular behavior. I don't think that's really all that um, necessary. Hey, Frank, what's up? You missed this workshop. It went really, really well. But now you get to see writing tests for it, and that'll be cool. Um, all right, so we need to make uh, a list item. So what I'm going to do, actually, you know what I want to do is I'm going to add a new dependency. We're going to yarn add. Uh, test and, and I'm going to add it as a regular dependency because I want these tests to be able to run in Code Sandbox and Code Sandbox doesn't install dev dependencies so I'm going to add it as a regular one. Um, test data bot. This is a sweet package by my uh, friend Jack. Oh shoot, what's Jack's last name? I would be remiss to not tell you exactly who I'm talking about. Jack Franklin, that's of course. Jack Franklin, he made this thing. And, uh, and I like it a lot. It's great. Actually, I might need test data bot. Might need this here. OK, sweet. So this allows you just to generate fake data, because I don't want to hard code data. Um, I want my test to say uh, uh, to only have the hard coded data in there that like communicates this needs to be this way. Um, and so by that, I mean. If I say username is um, Chuck Norris, then um, I'm like maybe my source, uh, like the source code, the implementation needs to check for Chuck Norris to do something special because Chuck Norris is special, um, or maybe not, and I'm not sure. But when it's generated data, then I know, oh, okay, the username it doesn't have to be anything special; it just needs to be like a regular username, which is cool. Um, okay, sweet. So let's uh, let's pull that in. Import um, here. How do we import it? Build fake and sequence. I don't need a sequence, so we'll just do build and fake uh, from test data bot, and we're gonna make our list item. It goes build the list item. Oh, that was my kid just knocked on my window. Uh, they often do that. I'm hoping that I'll uh, somehow be done with work earlier today. Uh, gotta love them. They're great. Uh, okay, so we've got our response on this list item. I'm just going to copy this thing. Okay, we'll just do this. Uh, store as a global variable. Then we'll copy temp1. And I'll stick it right here. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And boom, we've got it. I'm going to make actually another one. Book is build book fields. We'll take the book here and put it there. OK, so then let's see how to use this thing. Um, I think if I provide a function, um, OK, so the field values could be one of a static value, a call a sequence. OK call to fake, call to per build, um, incrementing ID, one of, OK, so it's a call to one of these things. I think maybe what I'll do is call sequence and then just ignore the argument. Let me see what sequence does, though. 
go sequence generator okay hold on build here we go take a name fields okay yeah that's what we're calling we're calling fields with the fields object for each one of these we'll, uh, make a new field out of that and that's the generator. Okay, so then if it's an instance of a generator, then we do that special stuff. Um, otherwise, it's... Um, okay. Yeah, otherwise, then it's nothing special. It'll just be that, that static value. So if I provide a function, just myself, then it's not going to work. So I need to do a sequence. Um, and we'll just ignore um, the value. So we'll do sequence. And then we'll say um, book dot um, build. Oh, I can't remember what this API looks like. So let's take a look. Oh, it's just a function. Yeah, okay. So let's go up here. This is going to be build book and uh, build list item. We'll say build book just to give us a random book there. Um, but actually, I guess we kind of do want to have a consistent um, ID. Uh, yeah, so the book ID should be the same as this ID. Hmm. So I think maybe we need to do an incrementing ID. This will produce do do do. Per build. Hmm. Okay, we'll look at that here in a second. Um, but I'm going to get rid of these uh, these things. We're going to do a fake, fake. Um, and here I think he just uses f. Yeah. Let's look at faker. Js. You know what? I may just switch us from test uh, data bot to faker because this isn't quite going to do it for my particular case here. Uh, mostly because I'm monkey patching the book. Um, that is represented by this book ID, and I need those to be the same. Um, so, boy, the docs for this thing are not great. Okay. So, we need a book title. Title. Uh, maybe book? Nope, that's too bad. Um, okay, title. About, uh, yeah, we'll just do lorem. Lorem words. And I wish that I could get a better idea of like what these outputs are. See, the docs could be so much better. Um, I think we have access to Faker. No, nope. I thought we did. Oh, maybe it's a capital F, Faker. Nope. Oh, and that's where we are right now. All right, yeah, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna yarn remove test data bot and yarn add baker.js. Pretty sure that's what it is. npm install, no. Is it baker.js? No, it's just baker. Okay, yarn add baker. Boy, somebody could create a faker.js and they would have just got all my keys and stuff. Um, let's see. Um, got a couple questions here. I'll just look at what do you recommend to enhance the CEO? Um, I'm guessing you're saying SEO, server engine op optimization, Ooh, do, 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 do. server side rendering. Um, use Gatsby or maybe um, Next.js, but I'm a huge fan of Gatsby, so give that a look. 
Is there is it reasonable to migrate from Enzyme to React Testing Library for using hooks right now? Can you suggest an alternative? So uh, full disclosure, I'm the author of React Testing Library, um, but it is yeah you're totally able to use them both. You can even use them in the same file, no problem. So migrating is um, yeah like tooling isn't the problem with migrating. It's just learning uh, learning them and then the hazards of having two libraries that do the same thing in one uh, project. So. Um, but yeah, I strongly recommend that you do because it's great. Okay, so we're going to import faker from faker. And I'm going to make a function um, called, uh, yeah, build book. I like that. That makes sense. Um, and we'll return this. Um, we'll have overrides. And then I'm going to just put the title. Blah. Here we go. Just to get that back. Do, 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 do. Oh, actually, let's do that. Okay, cool. So then we'll do faker dot um, uh, lorem dot words and faker um, name. Yeah, name dot. Um, Let's see what we have here. Last name. We'll do first name and last name. I feel like they have they should have a full name. Full name. Name. Find name. Oh, okay. That makes absolutely no sense, but there you go. Okay, find name. Okay. And then the URL. Uh, I know that they've got image URL, image.url. <clears throat> okay. So we've got faker image URL. There we go. And then an ID. Let's just stick that up at the top. Faker UU um, random UUID. Okay. Page count. Faker number. Mm. Number random number and that takes a max number um, okay so we'll do 400 is our max number of pages uh, Eric is wondering is said it just wa it just started watching um, I haven't really shown a whole lot of testing yet you really want to you can um, scrub back on the video and just start from there feel free to do that um, okay faker dot um, Laura or let's see name or business I think we've got a business business uh, company yeah there we go company name and the only reason that I'm doing something other than lorem for lots of these is because like even though lorem would work, um, I want my error output and stuff to be more like sensible, I guess. So the synopsis, I'm gonna do lorem faker lorem dot word or paragraph. Yeah, just a paragraph. Sweet. Okay, so now we can build a book. Um, so let's get rid of this thing, and now we'll build a list item. Build list. Lost item, <laughs> list item. And this will return, oh, I always do uh, parentheses thanks to um, our handy dandy uh, React uh, stuff. Okay, so we're gonna take over, uh, overrides here also. We'll spread those there. And then this we're gonna say get or build a book with um, our overrides of ID. It will be the same as the book ID which we will generate up here. Oh, whoops, const book ID equals uh, faker random UUID. And that'll get us our book ID. So the reason that I'm going through all this trouble, by the way, is because I know that throughout this code base, um, as I'm adding tests, I'm gonna want to build books, list ID, or list items and users. So I'm gonna be doing this a lot. Um, 
which would be the benefit of using fake JS versus plain hardcore text in the build book function or hard coded text. Um, again, it's kind of, well, I, I guess I could do hard coded text, but I want each one to be different. And part of the benefit to doing randomized data is that it allows you to um, like potentially catch things that you wouldn't think about. Like o O'Leary, for example, as a last name, has a, a parentheses, or a, not a parentheses, a, a apostrophe in the middle of the name. And maybe your code breaks when you, it sees an apostrophe in the middle of the name or something like that. It can potentially make your code a little bit more flaky, but um, I think that overall it's a, a better, um, it'd be better to uh, catch those bugs in the test than in the production, so. Okay, sweet, so we need to get an ID for this list item, random UUID. And we'll do the same for the owner, faker, random UUID. And it just occurs to me that here um, we're going to use this use list item dispatch. And the use list item dispatch, if we look at the uh, implementation there, is going to use this um, list item dispatch context. And that, where that's being provided, uh, is inside a list item provider. And that uses use auth. And so we're going to need to render, and use auth is, is another provider. So we're going to need to render our um, app providers in here to be able to, t to test this, which is great because you're going to see how to uh, do that in a way that works really nicely. Um, okay, so it's going to, um, yeah, Eric, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. These async utilities are so nice when you've experienced the pain of async testing with uh, with enzyme, oh snap. Um, okay, just checking some stuff here. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, sweet, then our rating, we're gonna do faker random number, where our max value is five. And for our notes, we'll say faker random number or boolean. So I'm going to do uh, randomly if that boolean is true, then we'll give them notes or we'll give them no notes. Otherwise, we'll do some notes. Random. Um, uh, let's see. Um, or no, no, we want lorem paragraph. Okay, cool. And then the finish date, um, we'll make this a um, faker random date. Date, here we go. Date. Faker date. Um, yeah. Date dot past. Um, recent. Let's do recent. I wonder how recent recent is. Here, let's let's look at faker. Uh, var x equals uh, require faker x dot date dot past. So we've got some 2018s, 2019s. So it looks like probably in the last year is what this is. Oh wait, no, that's all past. Let's go um, recent. Okay, so recent is a lot more recent, like um, within the last 24 hours. Okay, so past is probably what we want. Something in the last year, that's what we're gonna do. Um, and we're going to need to get access to that finish date to determine the start date because we can't start something after you finish it, um, right? It wouldn't make sense. So we're going to do finish date up here. And then we'll say faker. If you hear some like drilling and stuff, it's because we're doing some work on our house and I've got somebody um, doing that work. So sorry if that bugs you. Okay, passed. And it looks like we can, it accepts a number of years um, in the past. And so we could probably pass that to go longer into the past. Um, and a reference date, um, which I'm guessing is like, don't be earlier than this year. So our state date, a start date, I'm going to say past uh, is two years ago and then finish date. I'm just guessing here though. So let's, let's try this. Um, Okay, so we'll say um, var y equals x dot date dot past, and then um, what is that? Okay, then we're gonna say um, x date dot past to 
and then y is our reference date. So we had uh, 2018 November. Let's see if we ever get um, anything more recent than that. I am pretty sure that's how that works. So we are, we're good to go with that. Sweet, thanks Baker. Um, all right, so now we can build a list item and actually render this thing. Um, we're gonna get another error with this, but we'll, let's do this really quick, list item. Build a list item, we'll say list item equals, oops, item equals list item. And let's go back here. Okay, sweet. So now we're getting an error because we're trying to use context that isn't being provided. Well, here's like, this is a question that I get so often, like way often. Um, yeah, right here. Any particular reason why you have state and dispatch in two different context providers? Um, I'm not gonna take a break and, and talk about that. It's like kind of, if you look at um, uh, my blog post blog here, how to optimize your context value, you can look at the alternative right here and that I kind of explain it right there. Uh, or if you'd been at the workshop on Monday, then you would have gotten that. Uh, Expl longer explanation and demos and everything there too. So, um, okay, but what we're getting right now is we need to provide um, some providers here uh, to this thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, well here, we'll start from the, from the beginning and work our way up to that. So I'm gonna import list pro, um, item provider from context item list item context, get our list item provider. That's the one we're missing. List item provider, boom. And now we're providing the list item provider, great. But now we're getting a similar error for our auth context. So let's do that. Let's get in the auth context, import, import auth content or auth um, provider from context, auth context, boom. And put that there, whoops. But we're gonna bump into a problem here real quick. And that is, um, it actually works, um, but it's actually making, um, in a real app, it would be making a fetch re uh, request uh, to get the auth provider's um, information, which is unfortunate. So what we're looking at right here is the full page spinner um, that the auth provider is gonna show at the on the onset of everything which is not cool we're also getting this warning because um, react needs to make some updates um, so I'm gonna do something to silence that warning um, let's do that first really quick and then we'll talk about how to deal with this auth provider problem um, <clears throat> build list item or a list item which convention do you prefer I've never actually heard of the um, a list item convention before um, I don't know I don't really care um, okay, so let's deal with this warning first. In future versions of React, like as soon as the next version um, is released, hopefully soon, this warning will just go away. But um, for right now, I don't wanna wait for that. And so we're gonna go to our setup tests file and I'm going to pop open this terminal here. And I'm going to cat my, um, yeah, advanced React patterns, uh, source setup tests right there. And, oh, no, that's not gonna do it. Maybe um, hooks, source tests, uh, setup tests. Yeah, there it is. Um, oh yeah, that's interesting. We gotta take a look at that later. Uh, okay, so we'll do this. Put that right there. Uh, yeah, thank you. And basically what this is gonna do is uh, it's hijacking the error method to uh, ignore all uh, console logs that look like this. Um, so it's, it's kind of, it's a bit of a hack, but it's a effective hack because now that warning's gone. Uh, okay, so now let's deal with this other problem of the fact that um, when our auth provider renders, the first thing that it does is it tries to bootstrap data. Well, that's not we, what we want to have happen. We want to, um, like mock that out or just make that not actually happen and um, override the value to be something specific that we want it to be. So uh, the cool thing is the way that I've written this provider is um, it takes the props that I provide and it uh, forwards them on to that auth provider, 
which is cool because it means I can actually override the value, which is awesome uh, for our tests. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, well, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. No, um, mm. Okay, so I'm kind of torn. I think mm, I'm going to start out by not doing that, and then we'll um, we'll see if I decide to do that later. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mock out this Bootstrap app data, which is coming from Utils Bootstrap. So I'm going to come in here now. <laughs> If you're watching this and you're like, he was just trying to test this, and I feel like it shouldn't be this hard, um, then you're right. And one thing that I could do to maybe simplify this is um, separate the, the part um, that's like the stars and handles the mouse over and everything from the part that actually updates the list item uh, and gets the, the list item information, whatever. Um, and I could do that and that'd be fine and I could test the the interaction by itself really easily uh, and actually I wouldn't have to do any of this provider nonsense or um, whatever I'd probably still need to generate the book data uh, not maybe not the book data but at least the list item data um, but uh, the reason that I'm not going to do that and, and make my testing really easy is because the application is not really easy and I, I want to get confidence that all these pieces work together really well and so I'm going to um, yeah I'm just gonna test it out um, in a, like all in an integrated fashion and then I avoid um, problems with um, having these isolated tests that all work in isolation but don't work together very well um, so for people who are asking unrelated questions to what I'm talking about I invite you to go to my AMA I just sent a link in the chat uh, please send questions that way. I'm trying to be focused here um, on what I'm talking about here. It's fine. I'm glad that you are asking questions, but yeah. And Frank, that was actually a really great interview. Um, I just put it on um, kentcdots.com slash um, appearances. So if you want to link to that, um, yeah, it was pretty recently. It was. I, I felt pretty good about that one. Okay, sweet. So... Um, yeah, this auth provider, it's making an HTTP request uh, as soon as we render. And so we need to, um, uh, we need to mock out that HTTP request. Uh, and so I could mock fetch um, and just mock out what Bootstrap uh, or mock out uh, the fetch call that Bootstrap is making. Um, and maybe I'll do that eventually, but actually right here at first, I'm going to just mock out Bootstrap itself. So let's do that. Um, we're going to say... Just, and by the way, lots of the, this is the very first test that I'm writing, and it's a, a total integration test, making sure that this thing works with all the providers that it needs. Uh, and that's why it's taking me a long time to get it. But once I have this test in place, then I can take all of these things that I've built and I can use them all over the place. Um, and so I'm, I'm inlining them all here, but eventually I'll pull these out into the little utilities. Uh, so here we're going to do just mock, and I'm going to look for uh, that bootstrap file. So we'll go... Um, I think it's going to be up uh, two times. Windows, uh, my uh, my streaming PC wants to restart, and I'm going to say no. How about let's pick a time. Um, yeah, man, Windows is crazy slow. I mean, maybe my computer's really slow, but yeah, sure, 5.39 p.m. That sounds great. Okay, cool. Um... Okay, so we're up to, and now I'm going to utils and bootstrap. There we go. So that's what I want to mock, and here's how I want to mock it. Um, so we're going to return the thing that we're using, this bootstrap app data. Uh, and that's going to take uh, nothing, actually. It takes no arguments. And um, we're going to return promise resolve. And what do we want to resolve it to? I, I guess I'm going to need a user, and I'm going to need these list items. So let's um, make a build user function. Build user. And I know that a user just has an ID, faker random UUID. And uh, a user also has a username, faker, um, let's see, uh, internet, I think, username, username, with a and capitalized, which is kind of weird, but that's what Faker does. 
Um, it also they also have a password, but I don't think I want to build a user with a password by default. So we'll have to add that if we want it. So we'll say overrides. And actually, they don't have a password. Um, they have a password hash is what's stored in the the database, um, and we never send that to the client anyway. Um, and then, in a, I gotta sign. Oh, hold on. Yeah, my wife just texted me. One second. Okay. Um, let's see, I feel like there was something else that the user had that I, oh yeah, a token. So sometimes the user will have a token as well. Um, and I think that this bootstrap app data is gonna uh, set local storage and stuff. Uh, Cause it uses this get user, the user that we get here, is gonna get the token from local storage and if it doesn't have a token, then it does nothing. Otherwise, it'll call the client and um, client to get me, API client. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, right. So when we're bootstrapping, we already have a token. So it's not going to send us back a token because we already have one. Okay, cool. So we don't need to worry about a token. Okay, cool. So then this is going to have the bootstrap app data is going to have user, build user. Um, and uh, where am I? I wanted to have our context, auth context. So yeah, user and a list items. List item items is an array of list item. Um, yeah, build list item. Okay, but our uh, list item has to have the same ID as our user, so we'll make our user build user. And user ID will be that user.id. Sweet. Okay, so uh, with this then, we actually want our list item um, to have Let's see. Um, I might actually do things a little bit differently here just to, to make things more explicit. So what I'm going to do instead of this is we're going to cut that out. We'll make this a jest function. Uh, that is a promise. Well, yeah, promise. Here, I know. We'll do this. Throw new error. Uh, must provide a mock implementation to bootstrap app data. Okay, cool. So now if I say this, we'll, we'll get that error, or we should, but we didn't. What? Hmm, that's interesting. It might be because it's happening asynchronously. Um, let's do async. I'm going to pull in one of React Testing Library's um, async utilities, await, or sorry, just wait, and await, wait. There we go. Interesting. Cool. So it does finish rendering, um, but it's not, I don't think it's calling this function. Here, let's get rid of that. Oh, no, it is. That's weird. It should be, oh, we must have a catch. You know what, we do have a catch. Um, on the, if that happens, um, huh, that's interesting. Here, let's uh, see all, is rejected and error. Is rejected true. Yeah, and there's our error that we threw. Um, why is it not? Rendering this though. First attempt. Here, let's. I don't want to be hidden behind that. Oh, interesting. Use layout effect. Uh, huh, is settled? Hmm. 
Weird. Setting, first thing, whatever. Yeah, let's get rid of that error. I know what that error is. Just cluttering up things. Setting first thing. Okay. First attempt finished. Huh. Here's another thing I'm going to do. Let's see. Wait for DOM change. Um, here, actually. Wait for element. There we go. We'll put that here instead. Wait for element. And we'll return null every time. And we'll call debug in here, return null. And we'll put a timeout here of 500 milliseconds because I don't want to wait that long for that to fail. OK, maybe 1,500. Oh, that's it. No, 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 that's what's going on. All right. So it timed out uh, because we're, we're never returning an element, so it's waiting forever. Uh, but we can see all the debugs that happen. So every time the DOM changes, then this callback will get called and we'll call debug. So let me comment out. Um, our console logs here, just to keep it nice and clean. Okay, so inside of a rating, I think we had a console log here as well. Console log. Okay, so our bootstrap app data is getting called. We're throwing the error. And then this is rendering. So um, things are happening a little bit out of order because sometimes Jess does that. I don't know why. But uh, so at first we render the full page spinner. And then we render, oh, actually, no, this is the right order. So we call the function. And then um, we say, oh, we're, we're waiting for this promise to resolve. So we're going to render the spinner. And then um, it resolves, except it rejects. So why is it um, giving us the rating? It should be rendering um, rejected. Oh, but we have a, a use layout effect. Hmm. I wonder if we need to use act manually here. So wait for element is already wrapped inside of act. Uh, oh my goodness, I hate this. That every time I say function F12, it takes me to the TypeScript definitions. I don't want the TypeScript definitions. I want the source code. Uh, and in addition, um, I'm pretty sure that React testing library overrides that. So React testing library um, dist um, index.js. Here we go. So wait for, no, I guess we don't. Hmm. Maybe we do need to use act manually. Wait, that would be a bummer. Pretty sure that there's something we could do in React Testing Library to make it so you don't have to do that. Because that would be silly. So let's let's just try this really quick. We'll go into DOM testing library. DOM testing library. We'll go to dist and um, wait for element. And in here, I'm just going to go const um, actually. Uh, Node React Testing Library Dist Act Compat. Okay, we'll pull that. Act Compat equals require React Testing Library uh, Dist Act Compat. And let's just go there. We've got our default is Act. So sweet. dot default. Okay, cool. So now we've got act compat and a mutation. We'll put this uh, callback inside of here. Result equals oops. And we'll just declare a result here. I'm just testing things out. This probably isn't going to do what we want, but maybe. 
No, it doesn't seem to. Yeah, I'm probably just like super confused about something. See, and this is what happens when you want to watch me um, do something unpracticed. I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, so what's, what's happening here is our use layout effect is not running um, right here. That's why um, is settled uh, never gets set, and so no, never no no that's wrong because is rejected. So is hmm okay rendering stuff or is rejected stuff here actually let's put it right there and I'll get rid of the debug for now. Rendering is rejected stuff. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I wonder. Hmm. Yeah, I think I know what's going on. So um, we actually are, React testing library is covering this for us, or somehow it's getting covered. And so be, um, we don't even get to see the DOM updates. So even though we're saying, hey, React, this is what you should render, then before React commits to the DOM, it calls our use layout effect and it says, actually, we're going to make some changes to state. And um, so then it re-renders again and it continues to render the auth uh, context provider, which is great. That's actually exactly what we want it to do. So, um, and if we wanted to render the is rejected state, then I'm not sure how we would do that. So we'll have to deal with that if we need to um, in the future. Okay, cool. So I'm actually feeling pretty good about this now. Um, so now we're going to, um, override this. Um, I kind of wish that the, um, a failure here or, or throwing this error would actually make an impact on, on things. So what I'm going to do here is instead of throwing an error, we'll console dot error. Like I'm glad that it's not cause we have good error handling, but, um, uh, there's a part of me that's like, I'd like to fail a test if we're not mocking this thing. Um, but yeah, now we've got this thing, so we're we're good. Uh, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I need to get access to this Bootstrap app, app data jest function so I can provide a mock implementation. So how I'm going to do that is I'll get Bootstrap app data from utils Bootstrap, and this Bootstrap app data is going to be our mock, um, and that's just the magic and power of jest. I love it. And so here we can, before we even start our test, we'll say um, mock uh, implementation, or I think there's a mock resolved value, mock resolved value once, I think is what it is. Oh, ah, rats, that's not what I want. Mock functions, here we go. Resolved, yeah, there it is. <coughs> yeah, cool. Very good. So we'll do mock um, there, mock resolve value once. And here's where we're going to create our user here, uh, const user equals that stuff. And that's the value we want to mock right there. So it has our user with our list item. And now actually we can have our list item right here. This is the whole reason I did all this uh, was so I can have my list item right here and then I can pass that same list item to our rating thing. There we go, finally got here, list item. Okay, cool. So now, instead of uh, waiting for that element, I do still need to wait for an element. So instead of using wait for element though, I'm going to use uh, f a find by query. So let's find out what we can um, find in here. We probably have some accessibility problems, so I'll have to go Google that. Um, and find out how we're supposed to be accessible here. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I'm tired. I just realized we also need to uh, test the error state as well. So what happens when there's a failure um, updating the um, yeah running stuff? So um, yeah, so we've got a bunch of buttons for each one of these, but they probably need an aria label or something. So let's take a look at accessibility 
star rating uh, custom controls star oh, sweet thank you don't do this i guess maybe or maybe it's saying do do this what's the x oh you give it a rating and close the rating cool that makes sense all right nice so Form is used with its field, fields visually hidden. It contains six radio buttons, one for each star, and another for zero stars, which is checked by default. The label for the radio buttons contain actual text and are hidden visually. Nice, we're gonna make this so much more accessible, it's gonna be great. We could probably make this an open source thing, and then people who, actually, it probably already exists. Here, let's see, accessible, accessible, um, star rating react <laughs> missing accessible well that's not good there we go we got a code pin accessible let's see how it's implemented check this one out also and yeah okay cool wait is that the same one? Yeah, it is. And then here we've got this one. Ooh. Fancy. So let's see if they implement this properly. Rating. Rating widget. Nope, they don't do the radio button thing either. Uh, that's too bad. Okay. Source. That. Nope. Our ratings. Input. Nope. Input. Nope. That's not it. According to the definition of this um, Y ARIA thing, that is not accessible either is unfortunate input okay hey okay, now that's looking good yeah radio buttons sweet that's cool but they don't mention accessibility in here at all Hmm. Just not sure that I want to use it because it has a bunch of stuff that I don't really care about. So probably going to build it myself, but I'll, I'll use this as a reference for how to do this. Um... Radio styles, display none. Yeah, there we go. So they're just rendering a hidden radio with the uh, name set to whatever name is here. It's coming from props, so you have to give it a name. Okay. Star node input. Okay, and it looks like they are and we call render stars. They're just putting, when, it, when it's actually rendered, I wonder if they have a demo, but I'm pretty sure that's just star radio, star radio, star radio, star radio. So I wanted to make sure that's okay. Um, is it deployed anywhere? We got GitHub, sweet. All right. Yeah, so an invisible input and then a label that wraps the star. Um, and then the label maybe. Yeah, that's interesting. So we gotta find out. Uh, actually, does it have a quick handler? Nope, no zero focusable input or, or uh, 
elements on this page, which is not good. So um, I'm thinking I do still want to make these buttons, but let's see what they do. So they do a label with the span. So are these focusable? That's interesting. Oh, you use the arrow keys. Okay, well, yeah. Huh. What is focusable? Oh, I know. It's um that's how radio buttons work. Yeah. So, up and down arrow keys with the regular radio button. And then it's just based off of which one is selected it determines or what yeah, which radio is selected it determines which one to to show. So, And then it adds a click listener onto the label. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so the reason I'm looking at how other um, ratings are list is, uh, or are uh, implemented is because I wanted to make sure that mine is implemented in an accessible way and it's not um, because I am kind of rebuilding my own radio button thing. I mean it's okay but um, screen readers work really well with um, radio buttons already and that's basically what this, this UI experience is. It's just a radio button kind of control and so I want to um, hmm. yeah, I just want to make mine as accessible as the real deal, um, with an actual radio button, and just wanted to see how other people are doing that. So we're going to have to, um, update our implementation to, I, I'm going to keep these as, um, actually I think a button, no, hmm, because see, they're adding a quick handler on uh, the label. Um, and then I guess that's, I guess that's fine. Cause then you tab and you can just use the arrow keys instead. And, um, the way that I had it, it was, you would, um, you could focus on each individual button. Um, but it makes sense that you would just treat it like a regular radio button. So we're going to remove the focus behavior here. Let's get rid of the tests for a second while I make these changes uh, to this after I make a, a quick, uh, send a quick text, one second. Oh, and the baby's awake upstairs, so I'm, I may have to wrap this up. Yeah, he's not happy, so I am gonna wrap this up. Um, sorry, everybody. Um, so in review, what we did not yet accomplished was actually getting the thing tested but we did get a lot of stuff done and ready for getting our app tested um, all over the place so anywhere we need a list item or a book or a user we can pull these out put them in a utility file and use those um, anywhere we want to mock the bootstrap app data we've got this um, and then we can mock it with some specific uh, stuff and we can make a little utility for that for the ones that are just like i want a logged in user and their list items and we just generate it all um, so, yeah, we've got that all for our tests. Um, and we could also just uh, say the value is, you know, something specific if we wanted to do that. Um, and then also, like, we could render all of our app providers uh, right here as well. And we could put that in a wrapper and get a whole bunch of other things done. Uh, so there's still more things to do. And when my wife gets home in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, then she can take the baby and I can uh, stream again. Uh, so don't, like... Um, go too far. Uh, I probably will stream again this afternoon, but I do got to go take care of my baby. So um, I will see you all maybe later today and hope you have a nice day. I will chat with you later. Goodbye. Alright, so I I totally forgot to stop the stream, but I think it actually is working. I just 
I, I started it up again and uh, I don't know, I'm just double checking to make sure that it's still working and I guess um, I'll tweet again that I'm, I'm back. So just, I'll just tweet this really quick. There it is, yeah, it's working. Cool, yeah. All right, let me uh, just go back here so that I can see chats as they come in and whatnot. Cool, all right, so we left off. I was gonna basically rewrite rating so that it could be accessible, and then that makes it a lot easier to test. Um, so two birds with one um, grain of food, because we don't kill birds, that would be very nice. So um, I think the key thing here is, um, I think I'm, I'm going to make these a label and we're going to use radio. Um, yeah, I use a radio instead. So, um, hmm, let's see. We got our span here and stars. I don't think, it looks like they're using a form, but I don't think we actually have to have these things inside of a form for it to be, um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, see, they they do something anytime you click on a, a one of the labels, and so that's that's fine. I don't I don't really want this to be inside of a form anyway. Um, so cool. We'll just have to add an on change handler to let's see React. Uh, radio on change. React tips. Out of date. Video event 16. Sweet. React.tips. That's interesting. All right. So we've got on change. Put that on there. We just put it on all of them. Change event target value. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Sweet. Hello. Um, all right, one thing I'm going to do here really quick, let me just, um, I'm just going to pull this over here. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to take these stars. These stars are just iterating, um, an array of five elements. And instead of a button, we're actually going to render two things. I'm going to do this. We're going to render an input of type radio. Um, and the name will be um, rating. And we'll have an on change. Um, so when we did on click, we did run. And I think we'll do the same thing. Uh, except we might also just uh, set the orange index as well. So let's do that. Um, run i and set orange index to i. Yeah, <clears throat> I think that's good. Um, and then here actually we'll, uh, yeah, this will be a label. Let's see what they do inside their label in this accessible example. We got a label for, and then these all have uh, IDs. So let's give this thing an ID. That makes sense. ID is um, going to be generated. Rating index, right? That makes sense. And then this will be, um, oh, you know what? This is going to be a React fragment. So we can have it, that key. Can't do props on a React fragment um, shortcut or syntax sugar thing, whatever. Uh, and then we don't want an on click on the label, do we? Yeah, they have an on click. Um,
Oh, right, because when you click on the label, it'll select the, the thing. So we can, I think we can get away with um, not having an on click on the label. We'll just see. Um, and we don't need an on focus or an on mouse over, I think, because now um, you'll focus on one of them and then you use the arrow keys to change. Um, so it's mouse over. So how did that work? So they have it, it does work here. I think maybe they're doing it with um, CSS, which would be cool. Mm, hover. Magic, that's how they're doing it. Um, I'll see if I can figure it out with CSS because I think that'd be better anyway. Um, but we'll, we'll take care of that later, so we'll get rid of those. Um, and then we have our CSS for the label. Uh, that was because it was a button before. Now it's not a button, uh, so we don't need any of that. Okay, cool. And then we have this, and we determine the color based off of the orange index. <coughs> um, so, yeah. And then this input, we're going to hide it with some CSS here in a second, but let's just take a look at what it looks like right now. Nice. Mouse over should be with CSS, shouldn't it? Yes, typically it would be. The reason I didn't have it be with CSS before, um, um, yeah, actually we, we do unset it. Um, I have this on blur on on mouse out where we unset it. Um, so the reason I did it before was because we had our state being stored um, in this run or this orange index thing anyway that was determined based off of the rating uh, and so it just kind of made sense that it would all just be whatever that orange index is and just update that orange index when we want it to be but now that we're changing things where instead of on focus um, we're now doing just radio buttons we probably won't need that so let's just see that boom 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 sweet but it's updating as I'm going, which actually I guess is okay. Um, maybe I'll debounce that. Um, yeah, I think I'll just debounce it so that it uh, only goes. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll just debounce it. Um, so it doesn't update like on every single. Well, it looks like it's kind of well, almost debounced. Oh no, actually, you know what? The request is being made instantly, but the uh, the log happens when the request is over uh, so that we can get both the uh, request and response um, in the log. And so it is happening instantly, um, but, it, uh, but the log happens later. That's why it seems like it's debounced, but it's not actually, it's, it's making the request as soon as the change happens. So um, I actually have in the notes, uh, no, it's a uh, book row as in notes. No, maybe it's not a uh, book page, book screen. There we go. Uh, notes where I'm doing this debounce thing. I'm going to um, do the same thing for our rating. And we're going to bring in debounce function, import, whoops, import debounce function from debounce function and handle rating change uh, or yeah, maybe we don't need to handle rating change we'll just call debounce run in here right here yep cool and we'll wait 300 milliseconds that sounds fine to me so now do 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 huh should be Debouncing that, but it's not. That's weird. Hmm. I think I know what's going on. So what's happening is this debounce, um, because we're run, running inside of a render, 
um, this debounce run is getting created new every single time. And, um, and so like we've got one debounce function for this update and one debounce for another. Um, yes, I am streaming at 60 frames per second. Thanks for appreciating that, nice and clear. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure what we need to do is memo or uh, use callback. So re I'm not sure why this, uh, you know what, actually I think this same bug is happening on the notes um, as well. So react use callback. Um, yeah, and we'll just pass debounce function and we'll pass run. And um, now I just need to determine whether run ever changes. So um, let's say react.use effect. We'll say uh, debounce run. And we'll call the log uh, changed. Let's just see if that changes. Yeah, it's changing every time. Probably because run is changing every time. Yeah, that's happening every time. Um, so that's a bummer. I wonder. Um, hmm. Because if we if we don't specify this, um, then we could be in a bit of trouble. So now we can do debounce run won't change every time. See now it's not changing. Uh, and now I can do this and it's debounced so we're good. Oh maybe that's just what I'll do and I'll just hope that um, we're fine. I, I, it looks fine. We're not getting any errors. And if I refresh it, it should have two. Yeah okay. All right, well, we'll just um, hope that works fine, I guess. Okay, so that's good. We've taken care of that bug. Um, and let's go ahead and do that for this one too. React use callback. Um, and now that's debounced. And oh, I think that'll work better for this one. Stuff is uh, da -da -ba -ba. Yeah, and before this would say update um, several times. And I was like, why is that happening? Now I know. Okay, <clears throat> cool. So, um, yeah, the next thing that we need to do is, um, yeah, you know what? I think in their version, they don't actually have anything in here to say, um, like, uh, to control the highlighted index or whatever. They just do it all in CSS. So I think that's probably what I'm going to want to do, uh, except. In mine, I pass a prop to the FA star uh, component. So let's see if I can simulate that same thing using CSS. Um, yeah, it looks like it just is using um, the color. So, or initial. Or yeah, grade two, or yeah, okay. So if I just set the style prop, here, let's do style equals this object where its color is that, and it should behave the same way. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, so we're good. So now if I do CSS, Um, here and actually no, what we'll do, we have, it's an SVG and we'll just set the style color there. CSS. Um, and let's see how they are hiding that. Star rating, input checked. How are they making uh, visually hidden? How's that? Oh, well, of course they wouldn't have visually hidden. That's 
just take a look at what they're doing then. So we got our input, visually hidden. This is what they do for visually hidden. And I'm going to just believe that they know what they're talking about. And we're going to put that in our global CSS file because I don't want to I don't want to do anything else. So visually hidden. I'll say class name <coughs> visually hidden. And then for the rest of the CSS, they have it applied our rating output. I think that is irrelevant. Yeah, okay, I think that's all. Okay, so when the input is checked, the sibling label is this, and then the, um, I don't remember what uh, my CSS selectors and stuff. Well, let's, let's just try this. We'll get rid of it. Well, we'll um, comment that. And we'll get rid of these. So we'll say and checked. Then um, <coughs> the uh, sibling label color orange. And we'll do. And label color is colors gray 20. Let's just see what that does for us here. Whoa. <laughs> okay, I, I think I'm going to need to see this really quick. Um, off. I think I may have these switched. Maybe. Okay, I don't know how this all works. Yeah, let's get rid of some of these things I don't need anymore. Okay. Um. Okay, so when it's, um, I'm confused. Oh, there we go. Huh. Why is the color not getting switched up as I'm making changes here? Do this one instead. It's not changing anything, but it should be. Okay, but anyway, the 30, 0 036 is checked. So 036 checked plus. So this needs to be plus. And then otherwise, it's, yeah, I guess. Okay, CSS. Sibling selector. Oh, and actually, I also want this one. Okay, so this is a general sibling selector, so any siblings. And this one is, or that one's the general. This is the adjacent, so right next door. Okay, that I think that makes sense. So the general is, in general, I want these to be this color. Okay, and then for those that are checked, I want the adjacent label to be this color. Yeah, okay. All right, cool, so we're getting part of it. So where does the rest of this come in? 
Oh, okay. So it defaults to 0, 036. And then it's following siblings. Okay. So and checked. And then we'll do and label. Um, no, 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 no. We need that. Um, here we go. And label. So all children labels will be color uh, colors dot gray twenty. Okay, that takes care of that. And then if it's checked the, as a general sibling label, it's going to be gray twenty. Um, here we'll just do this uh, the same name to make that easier. So if it's checked, then general in general there'll be twenty, except for the sibling will be orange. I think that is going to do it. Nope. Hmm. How are they doing this? See, you all came here to learn about testing, and now we're writing an accessible uh, rating thing, and now we're doing a CSS lesson because it doesn't know how to write CSS. Um, <clears throat> what is this color? I'm guessing it's that thing. Um. Oh wait, no. I think this should actually be colors orange. Uh, oh, whoops. We don't have a color for orange. We just do orange. Okay, so they're all highlighted. There we go. Um, so we're gonna say colors orange. Uh, if the rating is less than one, then we'll do colors gray 20. Otherwise, it'll be orange. That makes sense. But the rating is less than one, so why? Are... Huh. Rating is one on this one. Oh, we need to have a default. Um, okay. <clears throat> we could just do a value. Value is um, wait a second. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So the value is going to be the index plus one because we're not doing zero base rating. It's uh, one base rating. Uh, and then the checked is going to be i, uh, or it's going to be, yeah, i plus one equals the rating. There we go. Sweet, there we go. Whoa. Ah. Uh. So we want to update the rating value, but we don't want to make the request. We want to do like an optimistic update. Um, orange index. So we'll say it's checked if i is equal to the orange index. That makes sense. The orange index isn't getting updated. Oh, right. Yeah, the reason that I did that was um, to avoid unmount the unmounting warning. 
Um, I think we'll have to deal with that a different way. So now we'll get rid of this. We'll deal with that later. Okay, so that's interesting. The request uh, response comes back. Let's get rid of this. We did two puts. Yeah, it's like bouncing all over the place because, oh my goodness, <laughs> that is a nightmare. Um, because when the list item rating changes, then we set the orange index. Um, but maybe we just won't do that. We'll just <clears throat> always assume that we keep the orange index, like so. We have the the UI value, and anytime the user wants to change that, we we update the UI value, but then we go and update the database as well. Um, yeah, we could say um, if not is pending. Mm. Then we don't update it. Yeah. That just seems silly. So we'll just do this. So you see the updates are going on. But it's not updating our thing. So that's good. Okay, cool. So now we actually have the orange index. So we have the um, the UI state value, we have the server state value, and basically we're just saying, you know what, actually what we could do is we could say react.use effect um, orange index. So whenever the orange index changes, uh, here let's move this down, then we'll call debounce run bounce to run with the orange index and then all we have to worry about in our UI code is keeping the UI state updated and this side effects effect thing will make sure that the back end stays updated. So now we can just do this. Yeah. Cool, and then the UI never bounces around. The one place where this could be a problem potentially is if there's an error. So, um, yeah, and, and every time, um, oh, that's a bummer. Um, so Don Dev just told me that when you click on secure your seat, it takes you here. Registration is not currently available. Well, that's weird. Here, hold on a second. I'll be right back. Let me fix this.
All right, I fixed it. I don't know what that was all about, but I'm glad we got that resolved. That could have been kind of an unfortunate. Um, whew, thank you. Okay, so uh, let's see, what do we have left? Um, I don't think we need to worry about is pending anymore, which is kind of nice. Uh, we need to hide the checkbox, so let's, or excuse me, the radio. And now, probably be good to have a visual indication that this is what you're uh, focused on. So, hmm. and we can actually get rid of this thing. Oh, you know what? We need to do hover and click. Okay, so let's just get rid of that comment really quick. Um, yeah, and I think we'll get rid of that. Yeah, okay. So we do have, actually we do have click. Thought we had click. Hmm. Oh, we need to do HTML4, reading, I, there we go. Sweet. And then we'll do CSS, cursor, pointer. Boom, beauty. <clears throat> okay, just got a text about something. I'll be right back, hold on. All right, <clears throat> sweet. So now I want to, I could probably leave it at, at this, but I really like being able to um, see it turn orange when you hover over it. And that's the way that they implement it here as well. Um, and so let's make that happen. Uh, they also have like an underline. Man, there's a net in here, it's super annoying. They have this underline so that you know, see, can see which the current selection is. Okay, I gotta get this thing. It's sneaky. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna do the underline thing. Um, maybe it would be better for accessibility, but it's like literally a star thing. So if you wanna see what the current rating is, you go, you're like, oh, wh what is the current rating? You tab out of it and like, yeah, it's not like a big, big deal or anything. I do wanna have some sort of indication that you are focused on it and um, they do by uh, making it a dashed underline when you're focused on it, which I guess that makes sense. Um, I'm kind of thinking maybe when there's focus, it uh, has like a outline or something. So let's see. Wonder if we did tab index. Nope, that won't work. Um, let's see if we did focus. Um, border, or let's see, outline red. I don't know. Let's just see if that works at all. Yeah. The focus doesn't propagate up, I guess. I thought that focus did propagate up. But let's let's come up with something else that um, is more, like actually would show up. So we have border. Hmm. Why is there no border showing up? Solid, there we go. All right, so let's try that really quick. Solid one pixel red. Oh, 
that's outline border. Hmm. Yep, no dice. Uh, so the focus is not bubbling up, which is kind of annoying. When you focus on one of the elements inside, then it doesn't bubble that up. Wait. Sure would be nice if I could say when one of the children is focused, then focus within. That's right. Focus within, focus within. Is that supported? I always forget these newer things and I'm like, oh, yep, not supporting an edge. Boo. Enhancement request. Yeah, so the focus actually is on the child input, but I was wondering if maybe the focus like bubbled up so that if there's focus inside of the child, it will, I don't know. Um. Vote, yes. Three votes. I have 22 votes left. I didn't even realize I was still logged in. Maybe I'm not, and it's just local storage or something, but yeah. Why is this still missing? Okay, so this was 2016 for crying out loud. Yeah, and it's just a bunch of people saying we want it. A lot of people not being very uh, very nice, but as often is the case. Okay, well, so input colon focus. Well, so like, you mean if I do something like uh, an input colon focus? Um, yeah, so like I could do that and I, I could write that up here, say, and focus, whoops. But I don't want the, the indicator to be around each individual star. I want the indicator to be around the whole thing, um, which is why this is tricky. Mm. I mean, I can think of some hacky ways to make this work nicely. Um, like a, each one of these could render, um, hmm. Okay. Let's, let's just try one hacky way really quick. Um, that's the JavaScript way. So is focused. Maybe putting the parent element with an attribute tab index. Yeah, so if I did a tab index, then, um, yeah, see, let me show you what'll happen if I do a tab index. Um, it's not gonna work. Tab index, uh, we'll do it as zero so that it doesn't change the order. It just tabs appropriately. Uh, let's just get rid of this really quick. And now, bam, bam, bam focuses on that this but I can't do anything with with it so then my next tab goes to the inputs and then I can start controlling it so I don't want the div to focus I want the elements to focus um, but I want to see a visual indication that they are focused so that's the real trick so um, we can't do a tab index that won't work um, but we could do um, is focused set is focused equals react use state false and then we could say um is focused or here let's see we do um order yeah. 
we'll just start out with something is focused one pixel solid red otherwise nothing and then um but on focus that is focused to true and for this one on blur set set is focused to false there we go okay so that's not the visual indication we want um, but that gives us kind of the idea of what we're looking for so if we do focus that's going to give us this webkit ri uh, focus ring but I don't want webkit focus ring uh, focus ring color CSS see how well that's supported uh -huh. Um, can I use, I guess, can I, oh, there we go. No oh, focus visible. Can I use focus ring? Oh, that's, oh, a previous drafted as focus ring. Well, in any case, it's not supported in many browsers. So, hmm. Bummer. <clears throat> so we'll just do kind of our own little thing. Another thing I want to do here is style uh, inline, block, or no, not style. We're doing uh, display inline block. There we go. So it just is around that. Oh, except we want uh, display flex on that. Why do we want? Oh, right. We need display flex though. Oh, for the span. Um, hmm. Oh, what if we do CSS on this thing? Because that's. I'm trying to decide if I want the outline to be around an error message if we show an error. Probably. So let's back up. Do a div around all of this stuff. And we'll put the on blur on here. CSS with display inline block. And then instead of a border, we'll do outline is focused. Then we'll do red on the diagonal. And get rid of that. See how that does. Okay, well, the outline doesn't seem to work very well. Here, here we go. We're, hold on. Yeah, that would be cool if we could do that. Mm. Actually, you know what we could do? We could just use the WebKit focus ring thing. Yeah, so with the emotion, I mean, you can do fallback values, right? Um, with emotion, you do fallback values by providing an array as the value. So we'll say um, is focused. We could do that. Otherwise, we'll do this. Um, I think that'll work. Sweet. Hitting the fallback at least. I'm not sure why it's not getting the whole thing, but let's add a bummer. Okay. Um we'll go to sources. Pause. Ah, oh, rats. Too fast. Um, here, let's, I got an idea. This is easy. 
true. Okay, let's figure out why that is not valid for some reason. Oh, because we're overriding in the wrong direction. There we go. Okay, I think this is going to be good. It's going to be okay. And we can get rid of that semicolon, because who needs that, right? Uh, except I don't want to do red for realsies, so let's actually go back up here. Set that to true. It should have been set to false anyway. Uh, it looks great. Set this to false, or no, no, back to true, and switch these so I can get a good one that doesn't look really bad. Um, Let's see, um, Mozilla focus ring color and uh, edge focus ring color. Let's see if we can Moz focus ring. Oh, that's just lamenting the problem. Okay. All right, well, they're just gonna get the ugly one, I guess. Okay, I'm not sure how to do it. Well, we'll just say everybody gets the ugly one except for Chrome. That's basically what we're going to do. <coughs> so what is the ugly one going to look like? Let's make it up in here. Um, oh, for crying out loud, I don't know um, how to make something look nice. Um, here, custom, custom outline CSS. Okay, that was basically just a API doc. No, thank you. WP schools. Best outline CSS. Oh my goodness. Okay, nope. I don't know, let's just do something that um, doesn't look really terrible. Um, it does seem to be, yeah, it's got a margin right. Why do we have a margin right on there? Oh, it's for each one of those spans. Okay, not last child. I think I'm going to get a giant warning from eMotion for that one. Oh, maybe not. Sweet. Okay, nice. So then we'll go back here. Instead of red, we'll say orange. Yeah, I don't want it to be dotted. Maybe, yeah, I don't want it to be dotted. We're just going to do this. Okay, so let's put it back. And you know, for me, it's gonna look nice and I don't really care too much. It's not that important how it looks. Set this to false initially and let's take a look at what it looks like for people with Chrome. Beep, 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 beep. Nice. Beauty. Okay, cool. So now we gotta handle the um, mouse over and they did that with regular CSS. So let's see how they did this. So hover and focus. Got it, 
Okay. So say and ever um and oops focus label color colors gray twenty ever focus plus label. I think I might be able to combine some of these things. We'll see. We'll see. I think I may have messed that up too. Yeah. Yeah. No dice. Yeah. You see that? I click down and up because we get a blur event. Hmm. Man, that's super annoying. No way to automate this test. Uh, how it looks on the outer selection in a cross browser way. Nope. Uh, I mean, without you could do visual regression testing if you want to do it that way, but I'll tell you what, not worth it. Not worth it at all. Snapshot testing won't do it because um, you don't get like the visual. Um, I mean, we could assert that um, the right outline gets applied. We could do that, but um, there wouldn't be any reason to... Um, yeah, like you couldn't be cer like certain that it looks the way it's supposed to look without um, some visual um, aspect to our test, which we're not going to do. So, okay, coming back here. I think it's focused to change uh, the outline when it's selected. I'm not sure what you mean. If you could elaborate on that, Kent, uh, that would be cool. Let's say you did want, uh, use one of those other star rating components. Would you just not test this component or would you uh, still add a simple test to ensure that the use case is covered? Um, I, if I, yeah, if I were to use a, use a third party library for this and I would, that would significantly deprioritize this component on my things that I'm testing. Um, but like you have to remember that those third party components are just UI stuff. Um, there's business logic I have going on in here, which is the thing that I really want to test, which is um, that when the rating is changed, we call this um, run function uh, to update the rating, uh, which is going to dispatch to the update list item and so on and so forth and, and eventually make an API call. Um, so maybe adding some custom class when it has focus and then test if exists uh, if that class exists i'm not sure what you mean um if you could be more specific that would be great okay but i gotta figure out why um this hovering isn't doing my um desired thing here so hover and focus so we got this hover oh we're applying it to um yeah, let's let's go back down here. Here we go. And this one is hovered, so the the color is being applied to the input, but we want it to be applied um hmm. No, it it should be applied to the label. Oh, but, uh, no. Oh, I see what's going on. This needs to be a complete thing. So we'll do label. And this needs to be label. There we go. Aha, okay. So we're, we're getting there. We are getting there. I'm not sure why the rest of them are not being applied like that. Something like yeah, still not sure I understand what you mean by applying a class name. I'm I'm fine. Like I feel pretty fine with the way that this is working right now. I don't see why I'd need a class name for it. 
Uh, sometimes I test the third party uh, component it exists in the hierarchy, but I'm not sure it's worth it. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, if you had some logic around whether to show that third party component, then that logic maybe you'd want to test. But um, outside of that, I don't know if there's much reason to test that. Um, okay, so why are the rest of these? I'm guessing it's some sort of. Um, um, Oh, what is it? Not priority. It's the uh, specificity, specificity problem, which is really annoying. Uh, what if I like? Because this is an object, so um, maybe the order of the keys is relevant here. Nope. This is like the opposite of what I wanted to have happen. I just something just occurred to me. I need to check on something really quick. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll just shoot my wife a text really quick. Okay. <clears throat> uh, no, we are good. Hover not on the label, on the input. Oh yeah, so how to test this and then assert on the, the yeah, I honestly, I I pretty much don't test visual stuff um, more than manually very often, like, yeah. Um, sometimes I'll do it, but I'll, I'll show you there's a way to, uh, to use just DOM, there's a two half style, um, and I'm pretty sure that'll work because we're using emotion. Uh, okay, so why are the rest of these not getting the styles applied? Because the general sibling. Yeah, see that applies It's a general sibling, but then this is a general sibling, but it doesn't seem to apply. Or maybe Oh, hold on a second. No, they have the gray one and then they have this one. Oh, but they also have this thing. Yeah, let's see, so that's their blue and they make it blue by default. And we make it orange by default, right? Oh, no, we don't. That's why. Well, if the rating is greater than one or zero, I guess, because, um, yeah, that makes sense. If it's greater than zero, then we'll say they're all orange. Yeah, so it's if it's less than zero, then they're all gray. Otherwise, they're all orange, which is basically what they're doing. And then if it's checked on the sibling right next to it, it's blue. So if it's checked, the sibling right next to it is orange. 
And then if we're hovering over the star rating, find the inputs with the label next to them and that is gonna be blue. That's why it, I think that's where the star rating thing is. Oh, it's over the whole form. Yeah, so if you hover over the whole form, Okay, and then hover, so focus on the input. Huh, I feel like we're doing the exact same thing. If I uh, comment this out. It doesn't make any difference. Man, all right. Um, we're so close. We're so close. Okay, boo on all of this. I'm going to say, let's just set orange index, or yeah, let's and set orange index to I on focus. Oh, but then that'll update. <sighs> Uh, I feel like we're so close. I just need to get get this little bit of CSS working, and then it'll be good. Why are the ones on the left not highlighting? So wait, did it work when we have focus? Oh well, no, it, you don't get focus. We also have to deal with that. Uh. Okay, I feel like we've made some good decisions here, but some bad ones. So I'm gonna copy this. This is pretty much where I think most of our good things have come from. I'm gonna go back in time here. I'm gonna copy the whole thing to just keep it in my clipboard and we'll go back. Back a long time. Back before we started doing all this weird stuff with uh, these things here we go okay then I'm gonna come back here where did I start copying yeah from here okay and we'll get rid of this and actually hold on a second let me see yeah on mouse over and on focus and on click okay Hold on. On mouse over. Hey there, John. Dude, you get to watch this really boring thing where I show I don't know how to code. It's kind of fun. Okay. Okay. So. Oh, you know what? We don't need on focus to set the orange index because 
Um, we don't actually, do we? Yeah, I don't think we need to do that, that one. I think all that we need it to do is to set is focused to true. Let's go store that up again. Is focused, set, is focused, false. Ooh, the baby's watching. Hi, baby. Okay. Wait, isn't there a better, there's a on, on mouse in, um, there's another event. On mouse over it like fires all the time, right? On mouse, enter. That's the one I want. Yeah, not on mouse over, on mouse enter. That'll be much better. Um, okay. But in any case, Set orange, in, yeah, okay, and then set is focus to false. So this is still going to suffer from that one last problem. Um, okay, so those aren't the color that I want them to be uh, because I kind of changed how we do. Yeah, here, let's go back here. Uh, color. Um, Range index. Um. Oh shoot! What was? Yeah. Let's look at this. Get div here. I just grab that thing. There we go. Yeah, um, so we have set orange index here. We don't want to set it if we're in the middle of pending. Kind of thinking we do. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna change that around a little bit. Um, yeah, we need to make a couple of changes here, but let's just. Yeah, man, what's going on? On change. Oh yeah, we're never calling run. Ah, uh, man, I had like removed a lot of my work. That was actually useful. Okay, we're gonna get our debounced run. Actually, I, I can go to my book screen. Just gonna grab that. Debounce function, it's gonna come from Balance function. Okay. And then we'll just do this on change to the index and set orange. And actually, I am pretty sure that we don't want to do things the way that we were before. So let's get rid of all this. Let's go back to the use effect version. Or the orange index, all uh, debounce run with the orange index. And then in here, set orange index to the index. Actually, that um, on mouse enter is not going to run on this input because the mouse can't enter it, uh, enter it because it's visually hidden. And so instead, we'll put that on our label. Get rid of that. It can be focused though, even though it's visually hidden. And it can change, so we'll leave those there. Okay, I think 
think maybe we'll be good. Okay, something's going on. Hmm. Okay, no, we don't want to um, do a debounce run when the orange index changes because it can change as I'm moving around because we're doing this all in JavaScript now, not CSS, which honestly is a bit of a failure on my part, but that's the way it's going to be. So instead, um, we'll run this here. Debounced run on change. What is going on? Hmm. Okay, let's just uh, log that. Oh, we're gonna need that is focus thing later too. Orange index is focused. Let's just look at what those look like. Okay, orange index is focused is false. Keeps getting changed to the actual index or the actual rating. List item rating. Is this running? List item dot rating changed. No, that's not what's going on. And actually, I wanted to get rid of that anyway. On mouse enter and on change are not related because, I mean, if I'm clicking on it, then they are related, but um, I'm actually not firing that on change ever because I'm not clicking on any of them. So we can take a look at that for sure. Oh, goodness. Why, why is my snippet not showing up? Um, on change. No on change going on. So what is what is triggering the re-render? The re-render is happening because of on mouse enter. I'm guessing because it's not going to be on focus, not on change. Maybe it's on blur. Goodness gracious. On blur. No, it's not on blur. It's not on mouse out, is it? Yes, it is. Huh, that's interesting. But now I, I know why this was working before. Check this out. Um, on mouse over is what I had before. And this explains why I had so many effect calls. See, it's working fine, but it's because I'm like re-rendering like crazy. So that explains a lot. Okay, so enter. Um, and, huh. Am I going to do this? Monitor event? What is monitor event? Is that like a thing in the browser? What? That's pretty crazy. Woof, snap. Yes, many events happening. <laughs> I can see that, I, I know that events are happening, I just wasn't sure which one of those events was the one that was 
triggering the state change. So while that is a very cool uh, thing, it wouldn't have helped me just now, but I learned something new and it's very cool. Thanks for sharing that. Monitor event. Nice. Uh, okay, so. And that's, yeah, Aaron, you got it. That's exactly why the event uh, hook limiter was triggering. So as it happens, if I go to my hacks, uh, hack, uh, let's see, hack here. I'm gonna go back to the default because what we had was actually telling me a legit problem. So uh, hijack, there we go. So we, we do need to fix that problem. Um, But now, um, on mail center updates it, but then we leave one. Okay, I think I have an idea. So right now we have a margin right. Actually, this this shouldn't go here. We've got our oh because it's on there. That makes sense. Okay, well we'll just do the CSS here, and we'll move this into that block too. Actually, and um. Let's see. Actually, you know what? I, I, I kind of like it there where it is, and I'll show you why. Because it makes it really easy to do this. Not last child. And instead of margin, we're going to do padding. That should fix us, fix our problem. Nope, it does not. Rats. Label. Huh, that's weird. Oh, we don't have spans anymore. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so we can just get rid of that. That wasn't doing anything. Why am I, does these have margin? Let's do padding instead. But we're not talking about SVG. Well, that makes it smaller anyway. Hmm. Rehearsed is boring. Rehearsed may be boring. But it also is much higher value per minute. <laughs> so I don't think you will learn as much um, here if uh, as if you'd come to like my, one of my workshops or something. But yeah, it is more interesting. I'll give you that. You're just not going to learn as much. Uh, other than the fact that I don't know how to code sometimes. I just don't know what I'm doing. Uh... Hmm. What if we try this? Document or yeah, document add event listener. Um, uh, mouse. Um. Out. There we go. Console log. We need the event. E dot target. This is gonna be crazy. Here it is. Boom. 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 Okay. So we're on the label. Or so we let's see. We moused out of the rating and into the label. So what we need to do is on mouse out event. And we're going to need a ref, container ref. Let's get that. I thought I had a snippet for this. I don't. Okay, so let's 
react use ref say if if no come on if container ref dot um or if e dot target no 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 contains that's right contains e dot target and that needs to be dot current whoops my bad then return otherwise or yeah we'll just say it. if it's not then set um, orange index to rating minus one Booyah, that's so great. We did it. Good job, everyone. You all can go home now. Sweet, and we're not doing nearly as many re-renders as we were before. So, yeah, this is, uh, here, let's do this. Um, uh, I rewrote, oh man, it still is pointed to the wrong thing. Ah, oh, shoot, you know what? Man, I need to fix that. Um, I had a, I renamed an article and I thought I redirected it, but I apparently I didn't. Um, static redirects. Yeah, I fixed that. See, these are all the renames because like moist is a gross word. Um, but yeah, that one should redirect here. Oh, I know. I think I'm missing the slash here, and that's probably why. Boom, static, redirects. Fix redirects. Maybe. So there we go. Always. slash okay the slash worked I guess okay anyway uh, so we're here and I wanted to come and grab this use render counter just to show you something really quick so we have this use render counter I'm gonna get my counter and we'll render the counter um, right after the stars or before So now it's going to count how many times it renders. So when we render initially, it render, um, re-renders twice for some reason. Um, and then as we update these, it's re-rendering. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, and it makes sense. Like re-render, 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 re-render. Every one of those make sense, right? And if we could use CSS, if we were smart enough, if I was smart enough to figure that out, then... Oh, you know what? Oh, man. It's not um, updating... Quite right dang it we're not done hold on let's i'll, I'll uh, take you back here well i'll just show you this really quick before it was on mouse over and now check this out we're like getting way up really fast huh, it doesn't seem to be going as fast as i thought it was but it does go a little faster anyway um Okay, so we're on mouse enter, on mouse out. <coughs> we're not. Um, yeah, hmm. Else, or here, let's do. Console log e target in and out. Hmm. How could you fix the width of the current score? I'm not sure what you're saying there. Uh. Okay, but for some reason this on mouse out, um, it seems to be logging um, the element that uh, 
most recently you were you were leaving you were moving out of that element but it doesn't report um itself and so that's why uh, Here, let's try this. Um, instead, document that active element. So here we are. Body. Oh, well, that doesn't work because we're not dealing with focus. We're dealing with where the mouse is. By fix, I mean set a fixed width. I'm not. I still don't know what you're talking about. The, the only reason this is bouncing around is because we have the counter on the left side of the stars. If we put it on the right side, then it won't bounce around anymore. See, it's fine. And that's just a temporary thing anyway. Could event current target help here? Yes, maybe it could. Let's take a look. Event current target, except event is E. No, because that's, that's the, um, Oh, I guess it, it it does help because it means I don't need the container ref, which is nice. Um, you know, current target. But it doesn't help because the target is always going to be contained, so this will never apply. Uh, Um, so when we move out, but maybe, We're not contained in one of the labels. Okay. So, <coughs> um, is not a um, in a label. Labels e dot current target dot query selector label um, dot sum. E uh, label contains e dot target. So if it's or is in a label, there we go. If it's not is in a label, then we'll set that. That might work. Query selector is not a function. Well, I don't agree with that. What? On leave. Oh, on leave. Hmm. On mouse leave. What's the difference between on mouse leave and on mouse out? Versus on mouse out. Oh. Okay, well, that doesn't matter. Of course, that was W3 schools, so you don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, that might that might do it. Yes, this will need to be query selector all. Yes. So let's take a look at this e dot target. Is going to comment this stuff out for a second. This might be even better. Nice. Beauty, yeah, that's exactly what I need, Aaron. Thank you. On mouse leave. Sweet. Okay, so then let's try that. 
So we're at a four star. I go down here and I come back. Boom. Yay. See, I'm telling you, knowing your abstractions, there's there's a benefit there. Bink. Yeah, we need to make this display inline. Uh, inline block. So let's do that. Wrap this inside of a div. Um, yeah, let's do a div. CSS display inline block. Now we'll fix that. Oh, this is going to be so much better. Yeah, so before we had on mouse out, we had on mouse um, over. And it just re rendered like nuts. Oh my goodness, look at that. Isn't that crazy? That's what was going on before. Yeah, and that's why I hit our uh, fun little um, thing where it's like, hey, this is a problem, not good. But we just do mouse enter and mouse leave, then it doesn't need to re-render as much. It's exactly what we want. Yeah. Let's see if we can get it up to the limit. Nope, we're good. Beauty. All right, so let's um, get rid of this render counter thing. Um, get rid of that. And then we're gonna, we need to deal with the focus thing now. Because now if I go here and I tab, um, I can go back and forth, which is cool. That's what I'm looking for, but I need to have a focus so people know where in the world they are. And we decided earlier that this is the best way to do that. So, um, let's see, I'm gonna come back down here. What we're gonna do is focused. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, we'll have to come all the way here. I'll just grab this. Oh, and actually we'll do the on blur there too. And we'll come here, like that. Get rid of the on blur there. Actually, you can probably put this here as well. There we go. Whereas before, this was display block. And so then you'd be like, oh, I'm going to change this. And it stays at 5 until you go down. Or until you go all the way over, boom. So we want inline block. And now you come out and boom, it's gone. All right. Yeah, so it was on mouse over that was causing lots of rendering. Um, the render counter, sorry about the render counter thing, uh, is not part of the rating display. Okay, cool, cool. I'm feeling pretty good about this. So then we come in here and we're like, focus, sweet. I can focus and then I can tab through Then I can click on this and boo, um, I gotta add the click handler. Okay, so now that's interesting because these are inputs. HTML4, labels, associated, so the on-chain should run. Huh. Oh, I think I know what's going on. No, on-chain should run. I'm confused. Ah. So I click, and nothing happens. That's weird. Okay, let's um, up whatever. Oh, interesting. That's why, okay, so I hover over this one and I click on it and it doesn't change. That's what's going on. So, and that's gonna be a problem here too when I do this. Oh, the on change does happen in that situation. So I guess we just need a have an on click. Boy, all this would have been better if I'd just been smart enough to make the CSS thing work. Um, but that's not what I'm gonna do. So we'll say on click. I'll have 
of um, const handle um, or make change. Okay, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, and you can see the puts there. Then I'm hovering over and I click and the put goes. Sweet. Now I gotta figure out how to make that outline not mess up. And for crying out loud, oh, this is so annoying. Uh, no, I'm not still at PayPal anymore. Um, that was February 1st. I have a blog post that talks about it. I'm a full-time instructor now. Uh, I don't know. And they make it look so easy over here. Okay, I'm going to copy all this again. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm gonna actually going to paste what we had before. Ah! So we don't actually update the orange index until it's um, the rating. So I'm actually going to change this from orange index to um, rating uh, or uh, UI um, UI rating state index. I don't know. That's a bad name. I don't know. We'll leave it there for now. <laughs> um, but I do know that back here. Well, no, no, that's not going to. My hierarchy is the same um, where wherein it has um, a label right next to an input, next to a label, next to an input. Just double check that, but I'm pretty sure it's that's the same thing. Input label, input label. Oh, maybe I'm doing it in the wrong order. Input label. Yeah. Yeah, so they're doing input label, input label. I'm doing the same thing. Hold on a second. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that was the, the one problem left. Yeah, they're all siblings, uh, which is what enables the those selectors. I'm going to need to rename this video um, something that is not misleading because you all thought you were going to learn how to write tests um, but then you found out that I don't know how to write accessible writing things that don't look like garbage mm. See, it's almost perfect I just need to figure out how to make it so that when I'm hovering over that um, that it um, highlights all of them Okay, uh, CSS previous sibling selector. Yeah, the original example has form input, but we're not using a form. Uh, and, and it's not so much selecting the inputs. We can select the inputs just fine. Previous sibling selectors and how to fake them. Well, that's not good. First match that comes immediately after uh, matches all the ones that come after.
Hmm. Like all the siblings. What the heck are we doing with flex? Okay, I'm confused by this. But they did it. Okay, let's see how they do it, because they're different blocks of things. Not very helpful. I love Lambda School. I think it's great. Okay. G Money wants me to just use JS, but it was there were so many problems. Um, I don't want to just use JS, and it was like really complicated and stuff. I feel like if we can just make the CSS work, we'll be in a lot better place. Okay, so that hides the radio buttons. We've already got that. But this wants to um, row reverse. I don't know why it want, they want to show the stars side by side centered and in the reverse order than the HTML. I feel like that is wrong. You need a container for it to know what the parent is. I'm not sure I understand you, Aaron. Yeah, we we don't have problems. So they're all putting a container thing here so that they don't select all labels on the page. Uh, we don't have a problem with that because we're using CSS and JS. So we don't need to have a container specified. Yes, this video is available forever at the same URL. That's how live streams work on YouTube. I'm not sure what you mean, Aaron. I'm kind of confused. But okay, anyway, um, I think um, I'm like 15 seconds ahead of everybody. So we're kind of talking past each other a little bit. Oh, for goodness sakes. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, boo. Don't show me something that you wouldn't recommend to actually do. Okay, heck, I do that all the time, like literally all the time. But that was pretty annoying. Um, uh, yeah, well, I don't mind magic CSS as long as I don't ever have to change it. 
Um, and this is one thing that I will never really have to change, so I'm fine doing some magic CSS to make this work. So we can just say that everything is by default orange and everything after the one that's hovered is um, gray. I think that's conceptually what's going on here and that I thought that's what we were doing. <coughs> so here we go. Everything by, uh, you know what we should do is probably just do this color. Um, okay, well, hold on a second. Okay, so everything is orange by default. Um, If it's checked, um, hmm, isn't this this is the next right? That's the next sibling to be orange. The next sibling is orange. If it's um, unchecked, then the next sibling is gray. It's um, hovered, then the um, I think what's happening is I'm saying uh, then the rest of the siblings are gray. Uh, I'm so confused. Uh, yeah, Mateo, the, so they're using the uh, squiggly, which is the general selector to color the stars to the right of the selected, but that's not actually what they're doing. What they're doing is they're the the general sibling selector is like says left and right, uh, set them to gray, um, but we need to make sure that the um, ones that are on the left side are actually orange. Um, oh, I'm so confused. No, that that's not what it means in Mateo. The and checked uh, squiggly label means ev all siblings, all labels that are siblings to this checked uh, thing, because uh, it's not after. It's the general, general success. Oh, successor. Hold on. Oh no, you're right. Okay. Huh. All right. Okay. That's right. No, you're right, Mateo. Sorry. Um, so all the ones after are gray, except for the one that's immediately after is orange. And then on hover, when the input is hovered, then all the ones after are gray, except that immediately thereafter is orange. Okay, let's get rid of this focus because actually we don't. You don't focus these inputs, right? Or you do, you do. Well, let's get rid of the focus for now. And just the B on hover here. So if we're hovered, and all the 
labels thereafter are gray, except for the first one is going to be orange. And let me get rid of this. Okay, rats. That didn't work like I thought. Why is that? This should set the color. Hmm. For some reason this isn't setting the color to orange. I'll have to look at that later. Okay. So the real question is, why is this star gray when I'm hovered over that one? Should these be applied to the label instead? So if we move these to the label, then the one that I'm hovering is orange. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Oh my goodness, no way am I implementing half a star. No, nope, 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 nope. Uh, why is that star to the left? And why are we doing a put right here? We're updating the rating to two on mount. Oh, rats. We want this to only run on update. So I think I may have this in my uh, bracer. Update, use, use update effect. There we go. Oh man, use update effect. There we go. No, no, no. Use up. There it is. All right, react, user, react. Okay, now we're not doing that, but which is good. Uh, this is so strange. I um, hover on the input. A label gets updated, but this label does not. It doesn't even show that it would be applied. This one does. Okay, so let's go to two. Go to this one on the input associated with it. We do hover. Aha, that's interesting. So we're doing the same thing. So how are they making the one on the left active, focus, focus within, visited, huh? Well, that's interesting. We're missing something. Focus. So it is all on focus of the input.
And this one is irrelevant because we don't do this border bottom style. We have both of these. If we don't have that, that's not the right color anyway. Yeah, that one's always, unless it's hovered. Hmm. Oh, but we're not doing focus. Sorry, we're doing hover. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Oh, interesting. I think I, f I think I found it. I think I found it. We're going to do down here on the container cover. Um, input plus label color um, orange. Here we go, here we go. Boom. Ah, oh, rats. Not quite. Urgh. Okay, I'm thinking we are in a bit of a specificity war. Which, quite honestly, I don't remember last time I had to deal with that. But what's really frustrating is that my Chrome DevTools are not updating to show me what CSS is being applied as I interact with these elements. And that's really annoying. Let's see. Um, maybe it is. Sometimes it's not. So if all you're doing is hover, um, then it's not. Um, but I think sometimes if you're doing anything extra, then maybe it is, but like that rule applied anyway. So I think that worked. Um, yeah, it doesn't make a difference. I don't have a whole lot of time left anyway. Just want to get this done. Really wanted to write some tests today, to be honest. Ever. Okay, so we cannot reliably use this because Chrome is messed up. Uh, man, that's super annoying. That Chrome isn't really showing us the element or the styles that are being applied. But well, yeah, it's just a specificity war. So when you hover, the parent should set all the sib stars to orange, then the sibling rule should color the ones to the right back to gray, correct. And that's what this does. And same goes for focus, yep. Okay, and my wife is saying she'd be she'd like it very much if I come and help. So I'm gonna try and get this done really quick. Um, so I just need to raise the specificity of this one, and there's a really easy way to do that. I'm not gonna do this permanently, but um, I wonder if we could just do important. Okay, so that's almost almost right. Um, we could do this one as important, even more important. And that fixes it, and maybe I'm good with that. Um, you know what? Maybe I'm good. I'm good enough with that. Maybe that's fine. Interesting thing is that this is the the box. Um, 
and it, it includes all these margin bottom what if I do padding instead there we go okay margin um, I wonder why we're doing that anyway why do we need that Yeah, how about we just wait a second. Oh, that's on all labels. Okay. So um margin zero. There we go. I feel like there's some space on the top. I wonder where that space is coming from. I don't know. Okay, cool. So that'll do it. And you know what? I'm cool with important um, when you're using CSS and JS because um, you don't care about the cascade anyway. So it's fine. I think it's fine, fine, fine. We are totally done and my wife needs me. So, um, That really bothers me. Um, let's just see if we can do something really quick um, with this. If uh, document dot or let's see, e e dot current target includes document dot active element. So if it's not, then we turn off the focus. Let's try that. Okay, what was that? What, there's no current target on there? Okay, I gotta finish this quick. I can hear the baby. There. What? Input and div. Oh, contains, that's what I'm looking for. Contains. I'm gonna blame the TC39 for that one. Okay, interesting. So, console log document active element. Why is it set to body on mouse down? I had to deal with the same problem in downshift and it was super, super annoying. Yeah, dang it. Hmm. Yes. Try this really quick. I say tab index equals oops equals zero. See, and if I just click in here when it has a tab index zero, it's fine. Yeah, oh man. Okay, here. Um, do react use effect document document dot add event listener. Um, Mouse up and all Oop, that didn't do it. And I'll mouse up. 
remove document or return remove listener mouse up and all mouse up and we'll say let's see event um and if event dot um current or yeah dot target um yeah okay this will work i don't like it but it'll work container ref equals react use ref contains return or not return we'll just set uh, is focused false Yep, and then we need to add our ref, container ref. Uh, that's not going to handle everything though. Just the mouse. Oh, thank you. Oops. Oh, container f dot current. Yeah, see, it doesn't handle the mouse. Or it doesn't handle the blur with the keyboard. Dang it. Okay. Well, I've got to I got to stop here because I got to go help my wife with stuff. Hopefully that was interesting at least a little bit. And I will see you all later sometime I'll, I'll probably be doing a little bit more live streaming because we've got a little bit of time to to work on some of this stuff and i think it's kind of fun so i'll see you all later Bye.